What's up divas and what's up divas, it's your girl April and of course you already know it is Wednesday. So it's Real Talk Wednesday and I'm coming to you looking just like this with my head wrapped. Um, I did not feel the need today to put on a wig, okay, because I was relaxing, chillaxing, watching my grandbaby and just relaxing. So yes, but I did match it up really nice with my yellow shirt. And, yes, so this is actually an um, eternity scarf. So, you know those scarves you buy and they have no ending, they're just eternity. Well, it's a really good stretchy material. I bought it from Old Navy, actually brand new. It was from Old Navy, brand new from the thrift store for $1.99 about a year ago. And I did have good intentions, really, really good intentions of wearing it wrapped around my neck. But here's the thing. To me in Arizona... It doesn't get cold enough to wrap any damn thing around your neck. So a better place to wrap it is around my head. And that's what I did. Mm-hmm. Okay. So other than that, that's about it. The makeup look is by Too Faced. Um, their new Sweet Peach palette, among some other things. And yes, before I even start with this video and get started, I gotta send a special birthday shout out love to one of my favorite people in the entire world, which is my daughter Tati. She will be 20 years old. So I'm so proud of her and she is the bestest person in the world to me, my bestest friend ever. And we are like this. You know how you have those kids, like I have five kids and two grandkids, but you know how you have those kids and she's my second eldest. But anyway, you know how you have those kids where you have enough of them, but there's just one particular one that's just so strictly for you, ride or die, no matter what. And if you do know what I'm talking about, then let me tell you, Tati is that person. She was there for me through everything I've been through um, from the time she's been born until the time now, and she's still always there for me. And it's the same thing with her. So she is my bestest friend, and I just love her so much and I love all my kids so much but I'm just so proud of her and I would do anything in this world for her as well as all my kids so I just gotta send her some birthday love we are going to turn it up somewhat somewhat we're gonna go to Dave and Buster's and have a good time me and the kids and we're just going to really enjoy ourselves for her birthday so I'm just so happy for her and I'm just so happy that she's a great mother she's a wonderful mother to my little tinky man and I just, she wasn't the best kid in school, okay, because she got in trouble a lot, but she has grown to be a wonderful young lady, and it's really good when you're able to see that your kids have blossomed into something really, really special, and just something, someone that's so respectable, and just has so many great moral values. It's really good to see that, you know what I'm saying? And of course, all your kids that you have are not going to be the bestest okay thing in the world but they are your kids and no matter what love is unconditional and you have to love them because that's the person that they are and so i'm just so thankful that she is such a strong-willed person and i miss her so much living here with me though she only lives like you know four miles away i really miss her living here with me her and tinky because she was always there she'd always walk him into my room every morning and wake me up she cooked dinner all the time. She was just great company. And I just really, really miss her being here. And I'm always throwing little shady hints like, you know, you could always move back home. You don't have to pay rent, you know. You know, I, but she is very independent and I'm proud of her for that. But she already knows if she ever wants to come back, the door is here and her room is here for her. And that's all I have to say. So she's 20 years old and happy birthday to the bestest person in the world, to my best friend. And I love her dearly. So other than that, um, let's see. I do have my drink, so I've already been sipping it. Um, and you guys know, this is just regular vodka. It's, um, it's Amsterdam. It's peach flavored with some orange juice. Went through the drive through liquor store today to get, get it because I really didn't feel like walking through the grocery store. Um, lazy moment. Um, other than that, I do have new videos on the channel for some really inexpensive wigs, so make sure you check that out. Um... And yes, I want to thank everyone who has visited my website, goingwiththewindwigs.webly.com. I will be posting some new wigs. I know I did post some really late last week, and they sold out within minutes or a couple hours. So I do apologize, but it's hard to keep them on the site. Um, so 
you know, it's like me. When I release something, I release it late at night and nobody knows. But some people do know. But either way, um, yes, if you have anything in particular in mind, you can always send me an email and I'll be more than happy to assist you. But, so yes, if you are interested in having a real talk situation episode about yourself, some friends or family members that you know, then go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk, so that way I know that it is real talk. And if you want to change the name of yourself or characters in the email, go ahead and do so and let me know that, so that way I don't sit here racking my damn brain about who to call who what and what to call what what you know what I'm saying but yes I'm gonna try to get into four of these videos today um because I do need to quickly hurry up and finish make, making a wig so yes hunties yes so on that note let's get into this real talk <laughs> So let's see here. Hey April, just wanted to say how much I love your channel. I can literally rewatch every video you have and still crack up laughing. Okay, so let's get to it. You can call me Amber and my boyfriend Danny. I'm 23 and me and my boyfriend have been dating for about for about a year now. I'm going to just turn that down. That chime is annoying. To be honest, it started off bad. While on dates with him, he would talk about crushes he had on his female best friend, whom he to this day refuses to cut off, and this other girl he used to be very close to. He would say things about his best friend like, she's so beautiful, she can get anyone she wants, all while trying to pursue me. I ignored that because he claimed he wasn't attracted to her and hasn't been since high school. Of course, I never believed that. The other girl he would brag about was very close to his parents, and they had an inside joke about how he was going to marry the girl. Of course, I didn't find this out until later. Fast forward to a few months into dating. I met his parents, talked to them briefly, even though his mom was intoxicated, and stared at me obnoxiously the first time I ever sat down with her. Mind you, I'm a black woman, and Danny is white. Of course, I got bad vibes with her immediately, but just chalked it up to her being drunk. Fast forward again to just recently. His mother is upset because I haven't seen her enough or hung out with her enough, even though Danny and I live in another state for school. So the only times I get to see her is on breaks. She recently told my boyfriend Danny that I was a good girl, but I didn't have an understanding about how close her family and Danny's friends are to the family. To me, it seems she's angered by the fact that I live with Danny and get most of his time. But to be honest, she's been apprehensive about me from the beginning from, from, for some reason. Mind you, Danny hasn't voiced a meetup with his friends yet because I'm a really shy girl with anxiety problems. So his mother got on a tangent while with Danny and his friends one night and said that I'm weird for not having met his friends yet. Mind you, Danny is 22, not a child. His friends then say that they think I hate them and his mom feels the same way and keeps egging on the conversation by throwing shade by saying things like mystery girl to describe me. Danny told me today about this argument he had with his parents. He was very upset with me and blames me for his mother, mother going in on him. It's funny because I could have sworn he, was the, he wasn't the one with all of the hate getting thrown at him. She's practically telling him that she shouldn't be... He shouldn't be with me because I don't hang out with her enough or see his friends enough. She's turning him against me and it's working because he, t he holds his friends and his mother's words over my mental issue, anxiety. Basically, he doesn't care about my discomfort. He just wants me to dedicate my time, suck it up, and hang out with all his friends and become friends with them and his mother. Mind you, he hasn't even met my mother yet, let alone my friends, and I would never force him to meet my friends. He's always been obsessed with his friends like this, and on my birthday, he hung out with me for an hour. On, on his friend's birthday, he hung out with her, the female best friend he dated before. And until midnight and with a few other people and then the next day all day for my birthday he couldn't even text me happy birthday at midnight but he can drive to a girl's house for a party on hers April I need help what should I do and how should I handle his mother please help wow so it seems like a girl here Amber is having issues with her boyfriend's mother <laughs> first of all 
Danny's getting Danny's mother's getting upset because his girlfriend don't come see her, don't come hang out with her, and don't hang out with his friends and haven't met his friends. Let's backtrack this. Here is a guideline, a, um, a thin line, rather. That's your kid. Why the fuck you want to hang out with your kid's friends and your kid's girlfriend? She can come and meet you, but her first impressions of his mother was she's a fucking drunk. How you going to sit there and meet somebody intoxicated and stare them down obnoxiously and think that they want to come and hang out and chill with you on some real shit? Now, it ain't nothing wrong with being good friends with your boyfriend's mother or having a good relationship. But hold up, lady. We are years and years apart because let's not forget you are my boyfriend's mother. So there is a big gap in age difference. Now, either this lady need to find some fucking friends or get her goddamn life. Now, here's the thing. When my son's friends come over, <coughs> excuse me. They say, hey, mom, they all call me mom, and, you know, they hold a little conversation with me, and they go about their business. I don't really give a fuck if they don't hold a conversation with me or not. As long as you speak and you're respectable in my household, that's good enough, and that's fine. And as for my son if he, if, and his girlfriend or girlfriends, I don't really want to be friends with you. Because, for one, I'm already thinking, okay, you're either fast because you got my, man, my son as your man, or you up to something. So I don't really want to sit down and joke it up with you and hang out with you and become friends with you. Because for one, you ain't married to my son. You're not my daughter-in-law. We don't need to have that good of intentions and vibes. We don't need to hang out. We're not homies. We're not cool. We're not girlfriends. We're not mother and daughter. You are my boyfriend's mother. So I don't really think there is a need to hang out with her. Seems like Danny's mother's a little bit childish and she ain't got nobody else around to hang out with and talk to. What I would suggest that she do is find a life and get some fucking friends that's more on her level. However, from her maturity level and she's sitting around gossiping, calling you mystery girl, to his friends, seems like she really don't have a maturity level. And her maturity level is at a 20-year-old maturity level. So with those type of people, you really don't know how to handle them sometimes. Because they seem a little bit flighty. I'd be damned if I'm about to sit around with my son and his friends and talk about his girlfriend. And talk about, oh, they flighty, or they mystery, or they don't hang out with you. Why do you, or why does she feel the need for you to hang out with his friends? She should be very fucking happy that she has a son who has a good girlfriend that does stuff from him and is there for him. Not worry about who the fuck she hang out with, especially who the fuck she ain't hanging out with, which is you, his mother. Now, how would you handle this? Here's the thing. She seems kind of flighty, and if she's drunk and intoxicated meeting you on the first time, who knows what her true intentions are? Seems like she's flighty as it is from the jump. And I'm just saying this because... If you want to sit there and talk about your son's girlfriend amongst his friends, then you have issues. There is a time and a place for every fucking thing. And the time and the place is with him. If you feel like she's ignoring your fucking punk ass and she ain't giving you the attention that you need, Miss Danny's mother, then that's a problem, okay? You either need to find a life. If you don't have a husband, go find one. Or go find a man. Or find some girlfriends of your own age bracket to hang the fuck out. Here's the thing, Amber, you really don't need to explain yourself to this lady, okay? If you have anxiety issues, then Danny needs to respect that. And he needs to confess that shit to his mother, okay? And to his friends. If you ain't forcing him to hang out with your friends, what the fuck does it matter if he's hanging out with your friends, his friends, his mama friends, whoever? Seems kind of weird. And I'm not trying to go on a race car, but... Different races do different things, and I've noticed that just in the long run from different conversations, watching different type of shows, watching people raise their kids. We're all different. I don't really want to hang out with my kids' friends. My daughter is my best friend, but if she's hanging out with her friends and she's asking me, hey, can you keep my son? Can you watch him while I hang out with my friends? Go right ahead. I don't really find any type of entertainment in hanging out with any of my kids' you know, significant others. Just like my son, my eldest son. He has a girlfriend, and I've taken her places with me before. You know what I'm saying? I've taken her shopping, I bought her things, and we've hung out. However, the hangout was not like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, here, I want to buy you some school clothes, and that's it. I don't want to go to the bar with you. I don't want to have drinks with you. I don't want to have barbecues with you. If you come over and you're with my son, we have a nice conversation because you are my son's, my grandson's mother, then that's cool. But me and you hanging 
hanging out is not cool. Like, I don't really want to hang out with you. Your maturity level and my maturity level are on two different levels. What the fuck you like to do is not what the hell I like to do. And young people, their caliber is totally different from our caliber. Their conversations might be a little bit different. So it seems like her maturity level is not where it needs to be. Now, how you handle it is, for one, you need to talk to Danny and let him know, first of all, I really don't appreciate your mother calling me mystery girl behind my back, talking about me, asking you why I don't hang out with her. I don't really feel the need to hang out with your mother because, for one, that is your mother. Yes, we do need to get to know each other a little bit more, but can it please be on my own terms? I don't really like to be forced into things that I don't feel comfortable with. I'm already in an issue where I have anxiety problems, and you forcing me and your friends forcing me, and your mother forcing me is making it really uncomfortable. Bottom line. And if Danny can't straighten up and talk to his mother about it, then sweetheart, maybe you need to ditch Danny. Because Danny's starting to sound like he's a mama's boy. Straight up, he sound like a mama's boy. He hanging out. Like, it's okay to hang out with your kids. By all means, those are your children. Of course you want to hang out with them and have a good relationship. Of course you want to know who their friends are because you want to make sure that their friends ain't a piece of shit. But hanging out with their friends is something that we just don't do. It seems like a fucking reality TV show on some real shit like, like a reality TV show. You don't hang out with her enough. Okay, and here's the thing, Danny ain't even met your mother. Has he even has he even given an taken initiative to try to meet your family and your friends? Because if not, then you need to kindly let him know, listen, I have not forced you to meet my family and we live together. I have not forced you to meet my friends and we live together. When it's your time, it's your fucking time. Bottom line. People have total different agendas for shit. And what is the sense of her wanting to hang out with you? What, is she trying to see what you really up to? What your real intentions are? There is a thin line, okay? And this is your boyfriend, and this is your boyfriend's mother. And there are boundaries, okay? Yes, it's nice to hang out with your in-laws and dish it up and so forth. But if your first impressions of this bitch is being a fucking obnoxious, intoxicated, drunk ass then by all means, I wouldn't want to hang out with her ass neither. And if she's staring me down like the death of stare, bitch, you lucky I ain't pop your ass a good couple of times for looking at me like that. Now, it ain't about a race car. It's cool. She, he, white, you black. It doesn't really matter. But there's a thin line and there's boundaries. And by all means, what I really think you need to do is let Danny know, listen, I'm not comfortable hanging out with your mother like that because I have my own issues. And as well as that is you have not even taken the initiative to meet my family. So how is that fair? I don't force you to hang out with my friends. I don't force you to meet my friends. I don't force you to hang out with my family. I would really appreciate it if you've spoken, spoken to your mother. Speak to her and let her know, listen, my girlfriend has anxiety issues and she's shy and she's very uncomfortable maybe we can get together as a family function a family gathering a family dinner and get to know each other a little bit more because the first situation when you met her was real fucking awkward like i'll be damned if i go to my boyfriend's house and my mother's house and she drunk and intoxicated and looking at me like that honestly First impressions are a motherfucker. And if I was to meet somebody like that, especially for my boyfriend who I care about and I met his mother like that, I really don't think I would want to fuck with her like that because those are first impressions. Just like with my ex. His mother, she drinks a lot. She smokes weed a lot. They do these things together as a family. Him and his mother and his sister. This is what they do together. I never was really comfortable with that. So you've never seen me sit around and smoke weed with the lady or drink with the lady. Because I just think there's boundaries and there's a time and a place for every fucking thing. And we are all adults. However, we are all on different maturity levels. So I really don't think that getting drunk with your mother-in-law or... Smoking weed with your mother or your mother-in-law is is cool. It's really not a cool factor. I mean, but if that's what you want to do, then that's what the fuck you want to do. However, your first impressions of this bitch was not the greatest. And you need to let him know that. The first time I met your mother, she was obnoxious and she was intoxicated. And it really felt made me feel uncomfortable. And for her to say that I don't hang out with her enough, first of all, she's not one of my friends. I'm not really sure how we want to hang out, but I'm more than willing to sit down and meet her again for a nice dinner amongst family members. But as far as hanging out with her, that's just not my cup of tea. And that's exactly how I would handle it with him. You ain't got to get into a full-blown argument. However, if that motherfucker get out of pocket, 
then you need to let his ass know you ain't never met my fucking family or my friends and I don't force you to okay so I would appreciate it if you and your fucking childish ass mother stop sitting around fucking cackling it up and talking about me like y'all are a bunch of teenagers in fucking high school and don't know how to get your life his mother need to get her motherfucking life and get some friends of her own okay for real, sitting around drinking, being all obnoxious, staring at somebody. You know what I'm saying? I'm like picturing this in my head, like, really, bitch, are you serious right now? You're going to sit here and stare me down while your ass is drunk. And then wonder why I don't want to fucking hang out with you. Why wouldn't I? Why would I? Okay? You're, you and me are totally different people. It's a boundary. And that's all you need to do is let him know. And if he can't accept that, then obviously... He can't accept you as a person. You know what I'm saying? Each person endures, every person endures a lot in life. And you don't know what that person goes through and how it makes them feel. And okay, maybe you comfortable sitting with your mama and your friends chatting it up and talking dirt about whomever. But this particular person and her mother just may not do that. Okay? They just may not do that. So just because he does that. Don't mean that Amber had to do that. Please. If it were me, I don't know. Because I'm real fucking non-filtered. I, I think I would call the lady up myself personally and just let her know, listen. You know, I do apologize if you feel some type of way towards me. Or if you feel like I'm a mystery girl. However, as you do know, we do live, we do live in different states. And I go to school as well as your son goes to school. And... I would love to get to know you as a person because you are Danny's mother. However, I would really appreciate it if you would stop calling me Mystery Girl because I don't hang out with him and his friends. Those are him and his friends. You got your own group of friends. Just because y'all are dating does not mean that y'all got to fucking hang out with the same people. Me personally, I'm sorry, but I don't want to hang out with my man's friends. I just don't. You know what I'm saying? I don't really want him hanging out with my friends. You know what I'm saying? Because we need our space and we need our time. And yeah, we can have a couple's night where we hanging out together as couples. That's cool too, but I don't feel like we have to do this shit on a regular basis. I don't feel like we need to hang out, mom. You know what I'm saying? I just don't feel that way. I don't need my kids' friends hanging out with me. First of all, it felt awkward. It feels very awkward. And when my son and his girlfriend and his son was living here, you know, my son would go to work and she would come and talk with us and watch TV with us, which is cool, but I really don't want to hear the shit that's going on in your life that's not relevant to my son and my grandson because I'm not on that maturity level. So as far as us hanging out, I really, you know, like I stray away from that because I am my own person. And yes, my daughter might be the same age as you, but it's a big difference. That's my daughter. And we have a different type of relationship and a different type of bond. But Danny's mother seems real immature. She seems like she needs to grow up and find some friends. And she probably don't have any friends because, for one, if you can sit around a bunch of young adults in their 20s, very, very early 20s, and talk about somebody not hanging out with you, then you really need to find a life because you ain't got one and you ain't got no motherfucking friends. So I would let her know. First things first, I would let him know. And if the shit continues, then I would let her know. You know what I'm saying? Because it's about respect. And if she can't respect you as a person, then what's that to say about Danny? He needs to get off his high horse and stop being a mama's boy because he's straight a mama's boy. And you can tell this just from the email. So, let Amber know what you would do in a situation. Because, for real, I ain't about to let nobody's mother punk me into fucking hanging out with their ass. I ain't really trying to hang out with you. I'm just not trying to hang out with your ass. <laughs> okay, so here we go. This one is another one. Names have already been changed. Dear April, so I've been married now for seven months and my husband Jack is driving me nuts. Before we've gotten married, I was under the impression that he was going to work on his career and finish school. None of this is happening. Currently, he is a drug dealer. He sells dope and doesn't make that much money. He knows this and understands this. He keeps telling me once upon a time, long ago, he was a big dip he was a big dealer with lots of money and whatnot. I don't care. Really, because it's not what's going on now. 
Anyways, he said he thinks he's going to get back into that point, get back to that point. Meanwhile, I'm asking him, when you're going back to school and when you're going to get a job, because this isn't lasting forever. You're 37 years old, and next thing you know, you're about to be 57, still running around, hitting corners, making lunch money. Did she say lunch money? He says, oh, in a few months, I just want to put myself in a good position. Bullshit. Our rent is $1,100 per month, and he only gives me $800 in total for all our bills, which cost around $2,500 a month. That's not including my credit cards. You can guess who's paying most of it. While I'm working overtime for the past seven months, he drives my car and pretty much fucks it up. I bought this car brand new off the lot with my good credit and $4,000 down payment. Ever since he has had the car, it seems like every month is something new. First he ran over a curb because he was trying to take a picture. And now the car sounds weird when he gets the car. And when The car sounds weird. Then he gets the car impounded and I had to wait 30 days which cost me a nice $1,900 loan. Then he's drunk driving home and runs into our building and now he's and crashed my damn car into someone. There is about 40,000 miles on that car and honestly I only put about 8,000 of them on there myself. When he had the chance he didn't want to he didn't want to buy his own car. So he drives mine and be going all day not taking into account that I have things to do when I'm not working and wonders where there why there is no food cooked or the clothes not washed. It's getting so annoying. He's my husband all but I'm like damn. When he crashed my car that was the last straw for me. So I told him that he needs to go to school and get his diploma. And get a job so he can have more money. That is consistent other than his dope boy bullshit. I said the only way you'll be able to stay here and continue to drive this car. This is what you, um, the car. This is what you have to do. Well. As well as stop smoking and drinking and driving. The nigga pretty much said no. So I told him to pack his shit and leave. I will drop you off. After three long hours of him prolonging himself to pack, he finally said, no, I'm not moving. We married. I'll do what, I'll do what you say. You can tell he don't want to do what I'm saying because I pretty much had to drag his ass down to where he needed to go. I'm fed up. He knows it, but he refuses to leave. I'm stuck and now I don't know what to do. Help me, please, Hennessy. Whoa. First of all, so here's the thing. Hennessy has been married to this no good fucking low life scumbag ass, nonchalant, non purpose ass nigga for seven months. He's 37 years old. He ain't got no education, damn near. He ain't got a job. He's a dope boy. He's a drug dealer. And from what Hennessy has said, he making lunch money, not even no real money. But then he goes back to those days of, well, once upon a time, not long ago, I was a dope boy making quite big stacks of dough. But now I'm standing on the corner, yo. I ain't got much but some lunch money, though. I can't afford my bills, so my girl and my wife, my wife she got to pay. And all I want to do is drive around all day, crashing up a car and taking selfies. Nigga, please get your life. Okay, I'm like some real shit. He done crashed her car, fucked up her car. He ain't even no real drug dealer. He's a fucking lunch money dealer. Like on some real shit. He 37 years old. Let's round that shit off. He damn near 40. Still selling dope, drug dealer. I mean, like, let's be honest, okay? Drunk driving, okay? It ain't got a life. Sound like somebody that I know. My ex. Okay, because he didn't crashed up enough of my motherfucking cars drinking and driving. All right. He thought he was a drug dealer, but he wasn't really making no money. Smoke weed, drink all the time. Okay. And then you get to a point in your life where you just fed the fuck up and you can't take no more. And you try to stick it out because you marry. But a lot of people don't take marriage real sacred anymore. Those vows is like obsolete. They, they really not important. And for you to try to put him out and he don't want to leave. Bitch, let me tell you something, Hennessy. I will fucking pack my shit the fuck up and get the fuck out. Go back to a family member's house and let that punk bitch stay there. Because I know the struggle. Now, all together your bills is $2,500 and all he's paying is 800 
Girl, please, I remember those days so fucking well when I used to pay like 75 to 80 percent of everything in my goddamn house, all right? And I didn't even have a job. I had unemployment. I had my own business to run, okay, which was my jewelry business. And I had YouTube money and affiliate money and video money. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you want me to do a video, you have to pay me, shit like that. But here it is. And... Uh, I had to pay for groceries, electricity, rent, whatever. It was whatever. I had to do that shit. And, you know, the first couple of months, it was like, okay, nigga, you just finally got on your feet. Okay, whatever. I'm going to see you do this. But then it's like, hold the fuck up. Are you one of my children? Because the last time I turned around and looked at my black ass and my black ass kids, they was five motherfuckers, okay? Not six. I am not your mama boy. Grow the fuck up. And he was driving my fucking cars, okay? Cars, plural, because I had two of them at the time, which I still have two cars. You know what I'm saying? But I had to buy another one. But, yeah, so driving my cars, drinking and driving, getting into bullshit. These are the type of non-purpose ass niggas that you just don't want to be bothered with. And it's fucked up to say the least that we have to marry them. And then we sit back and we try to work on it because we have a feeling in our heart for them, which is love, which sometimes can turn real quick into fucking hate over a time period, all right? And we try to work it out, like I was saying, because we married to them, and we hope nothing but the best. But you know what? It seems like this. As long as we as women continue to do shit and continue to work on shit and provide shit and take care of shit, they just gonna still act like they fucking kids and they haven't grown up. And it's sad to say the least, but no matter how fucking much you talk to him and tell him to you, or he is blue in the face. His punk ass just ain't going to fucking get it. And you can tell him, get the fuck out. I'm leaving you. And what he'll say is, I'm sorry, I'm going to do what you say. And yeah, it might be good for a couple of days. And he could be a real good brown noser. You know, brown noser, ass kisser. Who just want to kiss your motherfucking ass for a couple of days to get in real good. So that way you forget that shit and have fucking amnesia. That shit don't fucking work. It does not fucking work no more. You know what I'm saying? These non-purpose ass motherfuckers really are so non-purpose. To the point where it drives you insane. And it's like, yo, yo, get the fuck, get it together. Because you damn near 40, you want to be a dope boy standing on the corner. Nigga, you ain't even making enough to make ends meet. If you are supposed to be a drug dealer and the bills all together are $2,500, nigga, you should be paying all of that shit and then some, all right? Why the fuck I'm only getting $800? You ain't even giving me half. Okay, you're not even giving half the shit. And then you got to bust your ass and work overtime for seven months. You've been working overtime because this non-purpose nigga ain't doing shit. Let me tell you something, Hennessy. And you know what? Sometimes love is a hard thing to walk away from. It, it can be hard to walk away from somebody that you truly love. You know what I'm saying? But they bring you to a point in your life, it's like this. I could do bad all by myself, okay? And I am not going to allow you, non-purpose Negro, to keep fucking stressing me out and bringing me down and pulling me back to the dirt because that's what the fuck he's doing to you. Now, here's the thing. He's a drug dealer. It don't matter if he's a minimum lunch money-making drug dealer or a big drug dealer. Either way, he sells drugs. And I'm pretty sure that you don't want the fucking police or the feds kicking in your motherfucking door because you got this non-purpose ass Negro living in your house or apartment driving your motherfucking car around, okay? Because they are going to look at you. So, yeah, maybe when we was younger, we had little boyfriends that were drug dealers. I'm not going to say we all did. I'm going to be the first to admit, yes, I have had them in my past. But here's the thing. I'm 41 years old, about to be 42. I'd be damned if you about to be up in my motherfucking house selling drugs and ain't got no kind of education or a really decent education or no fucking job. I'd be damned if you just not, you just going to sit up around, drive my motherfucking shit to the ground, drive my motherfucking car. Nigga, is you crazy? If you a drug dealer, get your own shit. 
Don't let that motherfucker drive your car around. Don't give him no options. You know what I'm saying? Because it seems like you're giving him options. If you want to drive my car around and do this, you're going to have to do that. Fuck that nigga. Okay? Fuck his ass. Ain't no more options because he's done ran out of options. You didn't gave him enough options. And now you are putting your life on the line. Okay? Meaning you are risking your freedom and being evicted out of your house because of some non-purpose nigga. I'd be damned if I'm about to let some non-purpose nigga fucking live up in my shit and not do a motherfucking thing. You out your rabbit ass my Hennessy, okay? If he don't want to get the fuck out, then this is what the fuck you do. You get the fuck out. Because either way, he's not going to be able to afford anything and then he's going to have to leave. But why be there living with a non-purpose Negro while you're taking care of everything and then you looking around, you turn around next to you, you know your door getting kicked in. You know what I'm saying? And okay, they take him because they know it's just him. But next thing you know, you turn around, you got an eviction notice. We don't need drug dealers living in our building on our property. Okay? Now, maybe one day he'll eventually go back to school. Maybe one day he'll get a job. But here's the thing. The nigga is 37 years old. And like I said, round that shit off, that nigga is 40 years old. Who does that at that age? I mean, like, really. These kids today, these young kids, they, they call themselves drug dealers. It ain't like when we was growing up. And I'm not glorifying drug dealing back in the 80s when I was growing up. Or the early, early 90s. However, we were a little different as a person, as people. We didn't go around shooting people because... You wore the same sneakers that I wore today. You know what I'm saying? We didn't do shit like that. We had a little bit more values, a little bit more moral to us. Yeah, we might have sold crack cocaine, but we had a little bit more morals and values. And we didn't just go popping off just like the way they do pop off today. So, his old ass, because I'm going to say his old ass, because he's damn near 40 selling drugs. Like, that's so immature. Like, really, do get your life together at 40 damn near years old. You want to be a dope boy. You a fucking dumb boy. That's what the fuck you are, a dumb boy. And, Hennessy, as long as you stay with him and give him alternatives, options, then he's just going to continue to be a lunch money-making dope boy. And you're going to continue to be the one that's sitting there footing the bill for everything and being fucking stressed out and couldn't and can't ha and can't stand his ass. And I'm pretty sure you're tired of him. So why can continue to be miserable with somebody like him. Let me tell you. Here's the thing. And I'm going to say this like I say it all so well and all the time. We all deserve to be loved. But when there is so much negativity with that fucking love, it's really, really not worth it. Okay? You have dignity. You have pride. You have self-worth. And if you got a motherfucker, whether it be man or woman, male or female, cat or motherfucking dog, whatever your black ass, white ass, Asian ass, whatever your asses is into, it don't matter. It's love. And regardless of who's giving it to you, if they cannot respect you as a human being and compromise with you on a respectable adult level, okay, then there's no need to tolerate the shit, okay? I'm going to tell y'all what. Me as a person, it's like this. If you, y'all already know I'm in a relationship. However, if you cannot respect me as a person, then I'm not going to fuck with you, okay? I would rather be alone and happy than be with somebody and fucking miserable and stress the fuck out. I'm not about to let no motherfucker, man, or female, regardless of who I choose to be with, fucking stress me the fuck out no more, okay? Because for one, the main key factor is life is too goddamn short. And I'm 42 damn near years old. And I'd be damned if I'm going to let any motherfucker stress me that fuck out. I don't give a shit if you man or woman and if you got a whole lot of money or a whole little money, all right? I'm not about to let anyone stress me out disrespect me and fuck up my shit now first of all you bought yourself a brand new car off the lot with your good credit with four thousand dollars down a lot of bitches can't do some shit like that like myself 
because I don't have good credit. And I'm happy with just buying a nice, bomb-ass used car. But I ain't about to let no motherfucker drive that shit into the ground. Ain't on no given day, no given Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. I'm going to let you run my shit in the ground. You better be happy I let you ride my motherfucking 10-speed if I have one. Or get on my treadmill and run that shit to the ground. We work hard for the shit we got, and it's fucked up. When you have somebody that come into your life and you have good intentions with them and you want to build something with them, but they come into your life and they fuck your shit up. You know what I'm saying? That's the worst feeling in the world. And trust me, I have been there. I have had, how many cars crashed? My Isuzu Trooper was crashed. My freaking Mercury Sable was crashed. My fucking Ford Escort was crashed. Three cars fucking crashed because of that motherfucker, okay? And then my Tahoe that I still have, I'm sitting in my house one day and I have the blinds wide open wide open and I'm just sitting at the table editing the video and I could see from my dining room out into the street I see the tow truck driving by and at where my house was at there's a stop sign right there so he had to stop I said damn that looked like my motherfucking truck why that look like my goddamn truck so I go outside and um, the tow truck is turning around. I'm like, that that's my fucking Tahoe. Why is it on a flatbed truck when this motherfucker had it? Hmm. The tow truck guy stops in front of my house. No bitches, he wasn't returning my shit. He was returning the medication that was for one of my kids in the car that this motherfucker went to pick up and didn't bring me my truck back and got drunk, drive, dr got drunk. Yeah, so you went to CVS to pick up a prescription for one of the kids and decided to have a couple of drinks and then started fighting somebody in the street. And then the cops came and told my fucking truck. I said, you drop, you, you bring my truck back? No, we got I just was bringing the medication because I, I kind of thought you, your kids might need it. You know, it had the age and everything on it, which was very considerate of the tow truck guy to do. However, he had to take my motherfucking truck to the impound. Okay. So the next day, I didn't have to work th wait 30 days. They don't do that in New York. Up here in um, Arizona, I hear they do that. I had to wait the next day to get my fucking truck back. Let me tell you something. First of all, that motherfucker wasn't nowhere around because he was at the county jail. Okay? I had to get my fucking truck out of impound, which was like $70, 100 and something. Like about $100 because it was on a flatbed. For one, that was extra. The towing fee service and the tow storage. So I got it out really quickly the next morning. Um, But then I had to pay for that. And pay for this motherfucker to get out of the county jail. Which was like, I think it was like $600. Okay, so I'm sitting there waiting for this motherfucker to come out. Mind you, I got a long scratch on the side of my truck. Okay. And as soon as he gets in the car, he's like apologizing. I'm very apologetic. I'm sorry, I'm going to give you your money back. I need my money right fucking now. That's what I said, all right? I need my motherfucking money for this bail, and I need my motherfucking money for this tow, all right? I need all of it back, and I want it back today, now. Do you know what his fucking drug dealing ass did? His ass gave me my motherfucking money back after I slapped him upside his head a few times as well. Okay, so I know my daughter's calling. So like I was saying, my daughter, she's reminding me of love and hip hop as well. But it's recording. Like I was saying, I know the feeling of somebody coming along and fucking up your shit. Your long, hard work shit. Okay, long, hard work shit. And let me tell you something. It don't get no better. Seven months? Girl, please. I was married since 2004, and I got divorced in 2015. So, last May, I got divorced. Um, yeah. So that is what, 2011 years I was married, but I was, right? 15. Yeah, I think it was 11 years, some shit like that. But I was with him longer than that. And it does not get no better, trust and believe. You only seven months into the shit. If it's like that at seven months, bitch, you better run for the motherfucking border real quick. 
Pack your shit the fuck up and get out. And if his nonchalant, non-purpose ass want to lay hands on a motherfucker, bitch, call 911. Because I'm pretty sure he won't fucking want to react too much, being that he's a dope boy. So what I would do, my dear, had to fix the girls, um, the boobs. I would, so as I was saying, I had to change my memory card because it was like 40 minutes. So what I would do, my dear, is run for the border and ditch that nigga. For real, ditch him. Stop giving him options and alternatives because as long as you continue to do that, he's just going to feed onto that. And on some real shit, he's really not worth it. He is not one of those that is productive in society. So why even bother? Some people are worth the fight, and some people are worth working with and working through things. But if they're non-purpose, non-purpose Negro, non-purpose bitch, and they ain't productive, they're not worth it. You know what I'm saying? If they're going to continuously bring you down and fuck up your shit, they're really not worth it. If they don't have any value for you as a person or your shit, they are not worth sticking the fuck around. Bottom line. Okay, so let's see here. Hello again, April. I'm back with another situation in need of some advice. So I've been dating my boyfriend now for a little over a year. In the beginning, he and I, let's call him Josh, really honored the importance of respect and boundaries. But a year into things, it seems as though things are getting a little blurry in that aspect. Josh now relies on me to handle every part of his life. We're both full-time college students, which means we always have things going on. Josh plays football, has a job, and owns a dog. I have to wake him up to get to all four of his classes on time. They're gapped out classes, and he comes and he goes home to nap in between. Wake him up for work, remind him when he has to go to practice on time, when he has a doctor's or dentist appointment for not only him, but for his dog as well. I let him know when he has papers and homework to do so that he doesn't miss any of his deadlines. He even asked me to make or pack him lunch f four days a week because he doesn't want to eat unhealthy while he's working. April, it's all just becoming a bit too much for me. I find that we're now arguing about this constantly and it's driving a wedge between us that I can't stand. He says that he is appreciative of all that I do, but it's as though he forgets I have just as much, if not more, going on in my life as him. I don't have time to keep tra track of things he should be handling himself as a 21-year-old man. I truly love him, but I'm not sure how much longer I can do this. How do I get him to understand that I'm not his mother, I'm his girlfriend? So let's just call her um, Latanya. Latanya... This boyfriend and her are, I'm not really sure if they are living together. Um, seems like they are. Seems like they're living together. However, she is packing his lunch four days a week. She is reminding him when his appointments are. She is waking him up to get to work and to school on time and to practice on time. And God knows what the fuck else she's doing for this motherfucker. Um, and he's just saying, oh, he's just appreciative of that shit. Of course you're going to say I'm appreciative of that shit, Latanya, because if you don't, your ass ain't going to do shit for him. Don't seem like you a girlfriend. Don't seem like you a mother neither. Seem like your ass is his fucking personal assistant where you taking care of everything. You got to remind him when his fucking work is due, his homework is due, and his, his, his essays and shit, his papers are due for school. Bitch, please, first of all, like you said, you got enough shit going on in your life. I'll be damned if I got to fucking mentor a motherfucker to do what the hell he needs to do. You grown, okay? I got kids. Now, mind you, you ain't got no kids. But here's the thing. I got kids. I'm not about to tell you, you need to do this, you need to do that. If you can't fucking do these things on your own, then it seems like there's some um, some issues um, going on. But it might not be no issues. It seems like as though as long as you continue to feed into that shit and do that shit for him, and do that shit for him, he's just going to continue to use your ass. Yeah, he's appreciative of it. Shit, bitch, I'll be appreciative of that shit too if you making me lunch, making sure I get to work on time, wake up on time, get to class on time, remind me of my motherfucking appointments, fucking cook me dinner and whatever else, do my laundry, brush my motherfucking hair, put my makeup on, rub my feet, lotion me up. Up and whatever else you need to do, I will be appreciative of all that shit and then some. Alright, I ain't gonna sit there and not say thank you. I appreciate your ass. 
Come on. I mean, who don't appreciate that shit? And I appreciate is an easy word to fucking spit out your fucking mouth. However, if you not returning the appreciation for things that you need to be done, um, Latanya, then that nigga really don't appreciate too much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's easy to say I appreciate, but do your ass really fucking appreciate? Because here's the thing. Let's just let's just do this. You know what I'm saying? First of all, I'm not about to let nobody irritate me to the point of no return to where I'm constantly doing shit for them, constantly doing shit for them, and I got shit that I need to do for myself, and you not helping me with that shit. After a while, that is like, you know what, Negro, please, motherfucker, please, this is what the fuck I'm going to do for you. I ain't going to do shit for you, okay? You going to go to work hungry. You want to eat healthy? Nigga, you better get up and make yourself a sandwich. You're going to go to work hell, um, hungry, and you're going to wake up for a class real motherfucking late. And you're going to miss some of your doctor's appointment. It's sad to say, but with some people like this, because they're so dependent on their woman or their man to do shit, it's like, how are you going to survive on your own? You're a grown-ass person. You're a grown-ass man. You're a grown-ass woman. Do shit for yourself. Because that person that's constantly doing something for you, they may not be here for you for too long. You might wake up tomorrow... And they're not here. Because either you fucking do a wedge in between them and you drove them away. Or they asses are sick some fucking way or dead. Either way. You're going to wake up one fucking day and that person that been doing all this shit for you ain't going to do it for you. Because they ain't around. And what better way to do that shit is to not do the shit at all for them. Don't make him no sandwich. Don't make him nothing to eat for lunch. And you know what you do? And, oh, did you pack my lunch? Oh, no. You know what? I didn't have time because I was busy writing a paper for school. Or I was busy working or I was busy doing laundry or whatever the fuck you was doing. I was busy doing these things. You know what I'm saying? And let's see what the fuck he said. Because I wish a motherfucker would say, oh, so you was writing a paper? You couldn't make me a sandwich? Nigga, do I look like your motherfucking Mary Maid? You can make your own self something to eat for work, okay? Oh, because you was at work, you couldn't wake me up so I can get to work on time? I know you didn't just ask me because I was at fucking work that I couldn't wake you up for work on time. Do I look like your goddamn alarm clock where I need to fucking wake you the fuck up? I'd be damned if I'm going to go through all of that shit for somebody. Yeah, we in a relationship. It's nice. We share the load. Here's the key aspect. We share the load. Share the responsibility. Share the load. And this motherfucker don't look like he's sharing nothing but some dreams and sleep and thank yous and appreciation. It's a fine line between appreciation and what really ain't appreciated. That nigga don't appreciate you like that. Because if he really did, he wouldn't be asking you to do all of this and be depending on you. However, if you continuously do the shit, my dear Latanya, if you continuously do it, then you the dumb one, okay? Because if you kept doing that shit for me, I'm gonna allow you to keep doing the shit for me. Oh, shit, I wish a motherfucker would do all of that shit that you doing... Look, I would appreciate you more. Shit, you come over here to my house. I bet you I'll appreciate your ass a whole lot more. It's a give and take. You share the load, okay? And if he ain't sharing nothing, then he's unappreciative, okay? The next time he said to you, I appreciate it, you really appreciate it? Then why don't you make me something to eat and bring to school and work? If you appreciate it so much, why don't you do it for yourself? Because I have just as much stuff to do as you. And if you so appreciative, then you should appreciate that shit and know that I love you. However, you need to love me and show some real appreciation. A bitch like me will get real fucking non-filtered and bold with your ass. Because I, like I said, am not your motherfucking merry maid. We ain't born on this face of the earth to be doing shit. And like you said, what are you, his mother? If I'm your mother and you 21 years old, I'm not doing that shit for you. Let me tell you something. I used to have to wake up my son to go to work every morning at 6.30. And he was like... 20 he's 23 years old now so he was like 20 and i would make him lunch okay some days not every day just when i felt like it i would just make him some lunch or ask him you know what i'm saying i would make him lunch and stuff like that you know what i'm saying i would do those things for him but i didn't mind making him lunch because you know 
I was in the middle of making something to eat. But the waking him up every morning to go to work, that shit was annoying because I'm waking up out of my sleep to wake you the fuck up. And you have an alarm clock, but you just don't fucking pay it no mind. So what I did for him one day, I didn't wake his ass the fuck up. And he jumped out of bed and had to hurry up and get dressed and ran out the house and jumped in his car and sped all the way to work. Thank God he made it to work on time. However, sometimes you got to feed them adults of their own fucking reality. Because as long as you continue to fucking be that appreciation, they are going to fucking take advantage. It's a great thing to help one another out. It's great to be in a relationship and work together and help one another. But if you're the one that's doing every fucking thing, then it's not a relationship. It's a fucking assistant. I'm not your assistant. And that's what you need to tell him. I'm not your assistant. I'm not your mother. Okay? Even as a mother, we don't like doing that shit. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Like... I make my other son's lunch um, sandwiches sometimes because I'm in the middle of making a sandwich. So if I'm making me a sandwich and he comes in from the gym or wherever, you know what I'm saying, with his friends, you want something to eat? Because I'm making a sandwich. Oh, yeah, my thanks. And I'll make it. But I ain't just going to come out of my way and be like, you need a sandwich. You need me to make you, uh, make sure you wake up on time. You need me to make sure you got your papers ready for school. You need me to make sure you get to work. You need me to make sure... Nigga, please get the fuck up out of here. I don't work for you. And I tell my kids that all the time when they be like saying shit to me about certain shit. I not have to remind them. Or be, or like it'll be like they leave a mess around the house. I don't work for you. Last time I know, I do, look, I do not work for you. I work for myself. And this is what I tell my kids. Because I don't work for you. You ain't paying me no type of cash to be fucking walking around, making you shit all day long to eat. Fucking making sure you get to here and there on time. Like, I don't work for you. I don't got... You ain't giving me no paycheck. Bitches, please, let me tell you something. As long as you allow these motherfuckers, and I'm going to say bitches, niggas, whoever, everyone. As long as you allow someone to walk all over you, it's going to continue. It's nice to be told you're appreciated, of course. However, is that genuine? Are you really, truly appreciating me? Or are you just saying that because what the fuck else are you going to say? Thanks? Okay, yeah. Of course you're going to say I appreciate you because you appreciate the shit, but you really don't appreciate the shit. You know what I'm saying? So as long as you allow him, Latanya, to walk all over you, then he's going to walk all over you. And yes, like I said, it's nice to work together as a couple and help one another out. But here's the thing. You 21 years old. You need to learn to wake yourself the fuck up. Because in the real world, we have to wake ourselves up. I don't need anybody to wake me up every morning. I have my phone and it has an alarm on it. And I also have a regular clock, which I don't use anymore. But I have my phone that has an alarm on it, and I always so have a calendar in there to where my kids have an appointment, I'm putting it in. Even my dog Coco, if he has an appointment, I'm putting it in. If I need a reminder for something, I'm putting it in here, and it will notify me. That's what these are for. These are really good for that. It's not going to make me anything to eat. However, if your motherfucking ass get hungry enough, you'll know that you hungry and you'll make something to eat. If you know you got to go to work tomorrow and you like to eat fucking healthy and you want to make sure that you have something to eat, then you'll know to pack that shit. And if you don't, oh well, you ask the fuck out. LaTanya, this is the thing. Let's stop making this motherfucker lunches and brown bags, paper brown bag lunches. We're not going to pack no lunches. We're not going to wake his ass the fuck up. And if he says some smart shit to you, you need to let him know, I don't work for you. All right? I have my own life and I have own, my own things to do. And I don't see you or anybody else around here helping me out with any of the things that I need to get done. I have just as much as if more than you need to do. And I don't think it's right that I'm constantly doing stuff for you. And in return, all you can say is I appreciate you. That fucking word, I appreciate you, get worn real motherfucking thin, okay? Shit. Appreciate this shit, motherfucker. The middle finger. Appreciate that I'm not gonna fucking do anything. And then you'll really appreciate the shit. So this is what I'm saying. If you don't do the shit, and then he got a fan for himself, he gonna really learn to appreciate your ass. Feel me? If you don't, 
That nigga still gonna do the same dumb shit. And he's still gonna rely on Latanya to be his mommy or let's say his personal assistant that don't get paid. Okay? And of course she don't want him to go hungry. But here's the thing. Bitch, he ain't making you nothing to eat. So what the fuck? He ain't worried about your ass going hungry now, is he? Nope. Hmm. So think about what I'm saying. And ladies, I'm pretty sure this video is like an hour long now. So unfortunately, I only can get to three. But I will get to more next week. So as always, leave your personal opinions, comments below. Let the ladies know what you would do in these situations. And if you want a real talk, you can always send me an email. To Muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com and make sure to put in the subject line real talk. So now on that note, it is 8.27 p.m. here and I did promise Mumsy I would make her some wing dings. So, yeah, very late dinner. But I'm going to get it done because she appreciates me, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate them lemon pepper wings that I'm about to make too. So I'll see you girls on my next video as well as guys too. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe and I'll see you soon.